April Rain is the managing editor of Broadway Black and has been in show business for more than two decades. I asked her how big the deal is for Netflix, considering that Aichi has viewer numbers of 500 million per week. I think it's an incredible leap, um, not only for Netflix, but also for China, right? So what Netflix is doing is really broadening the opportunity for Chinese residents, uh, perhaps as many as 300 million, to be able to subscribe and appreciate the services that Netflix provides here in the States. Can you explain what's behind the uh, cult phenomenon in China with these shows that Americans have enjoyed for years? But I think that uh, anytime something is new, uh, it becomes part of the zeitgeist. So we see the same thing happening here in the United States. So when the first season of House of Cards came out, um, there was a mad rush for everyone to sort of watch the entire season immediately. And in fact, every time a new season of a show comes out, people are binge watching that show the very first weekend. They're not watching it the way uh, that we used to watch TV 10 or 20 years ago when we'd have to wait each week for a new episode. So in China, there's no different. They watch TV just as we do. They enjoy um, myriad characters. They enjoy drama and comedy just as we do. Uh, and so they are going to be interested in something new that they haven't had before. And House of Cards is a good example of TV that they or entertainment that they don't usually get. And so, of course, it makes sense that there's going to be a mad rush uh, to, to partake in it. What have they offered up to this point in contrast to these streaming services? Very little has been offered to Chinese residents. There is quite a booming biz business with respect to live video streaming, um, where you have fellow Chinese residents who set up um, basically a webcam in their home or in, even in offices, and they interact um, with Chinese residents. But the government has controlled the television for so long and streaming services for so long that there have been very few choices for Chinese residents. Netflix coming in now and broadening the scope, potentially, uh, gives a lot more opportunity for Chinese residents to view things that they haven't been able to in the past. And, and how did Netflix get around this in China? Well, I think this, is, this has been years in coming, so this isn't something that happened overnight. Netflix attempted to, as we mentioned, it attempted to go through one service, um, and that was not successful for a significant amount of time, and so they're trying something new. Uh, it will remain to be seen whether the government will allow this particular branch with IQIYI to go through uh, and have streaming services that way, and then hopefully it will open up the market for other companies to come forward and maybe even even provide some competition for Netflix in the future. And what about China's own homegrown uh, broadcasts and shows that would uh, be an alternative to a house of cards? Absolutely. And, and there's nothing that says that they can't coexist the same way that uh, shows in the United States coexist, right? So we could have something on a cable channel or something streaming. The big difference here is that when it's streaming, you get all of the episodes one time immediately. So if you want to binge watch, you can. Uh, but it doesn't mean, that doesn't take away from the shows. There are shows on, for example, on U.S. stations, on the major networks, and even on the cable networks that are loved and revered every every single week, even though we also have Netflix, which is obviously a juggernaut, along with Amazon and Hulu and some of the other streaming services that we have here. The goal is to open up the opportunities for Chinese residents as much as possible so that they can have a myriad of choices when deciding what entertainment they want to engage with on a regular basis.